and welcome to the Fly King Fisher winning post. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on board. I'm your host and guide, Mohit Lalvani. And on this very special show, we have for you one of Pune's most exciting and prestigious races. The SA Punawala Multi Million is a great two race for three year old horses over a mile. As one of the most prestigious races of the monsoon season in Pune, it attracts a number of classic hopefuls. Leading the field for the 2011 revival was the Pacey Shroff trained Cardinal. Cardinal, a son of Paceville, was an impressive winner on debut and had Prakash on top to bring him home. In the silks of Vijay Shirke, recently made famous by Jacqueline, it was no surprise that Cardinal was the favourite. Standing in his way were a number of more seasoned contenders including Faisal Abbas's Secret Service, Karthik Ganpati's Haunting Fantasy, Haunting Fantasy would race in the famous silks of Dr. Ramaswamy and this daughter of Diffident was making a season appearance on the Pune track. And the Bangalore Raider, Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs came to Western India from Bangalore with a reputation but was rumoured to have lost some of his condition from the journey. With Cardinal dominating the betting markets, the horses left the parade ring to head to the start. Well, now the horses are on their way to the start of the SA Punawala Multi Million. Meanwhile, it's time for us to catch up with our Kingfisher Trailblazers. The Villusi Punawala Gold Cup was created in memory of Villusi Punawala, the late wife of Dr. Cyrus Punawala and was for maiden Indian horses that are three-year-olds. This race run over a thousand meters attracted a field of eight. The three main contenders were Mystic Touch, a son of Diffident, trained by Karthik Ganpati, Fly Kiss, a son of Major Impact, trained by Narendra Lagat, and last but not least, Ashwa Prabir, trained by Sangram Singh Joshi. With the starter setting them off, as is always the case in a sprint, the early pace was a trailblazer. And as they begin to negotiate the home turn, Superhero has got a break of about two lengths from Ashwa Prabir getting closer. A length and a quarter further back, there's L1 on the outside towards the race Highway Express. Mystic Touch on the outside, there's Flying Kiss, Divine Splendor and Bless with about 300 meters more to run. And that Superhero, another stick, is now being passed by Ashwa Prabir going up nicely in front. Then comes Mystic Touch also coming up fast on the outside. Flying Kiss, Blessed all together with about 150 meters more to run. Then Mystic Touch now darts ahead. Mystic Touch a length and a half in front of Ashwa Prabir. Then this Flying Kiss coming up fast on the outside. But Mystic Touch is the winner here. Mystic Touch wins it from Flying Kiss. Then there is uh, Ashwa Prabir and the rest has the race past the finish. Mystic Touch is a well-bred three-year-old from the same family as Six Feet and Cardinal and is a true Kingfisher trailblazer. Well, I thought Mystic Touch will always run well uh, because in the million previously when she ran, she was up there for the, up to the last 200 meters and after the race, uh, we found she had uh, a lot of mud in her eyes. So probably that's why she didn't gallop and uh, nobody considered her. But she came good today. So the last time she ran, she ran with Snowblaze. They were all winners. This time it was a set of maidens and uh, they had a decent form but they were not outstanding. It was a very open race. Well, an impressive performance there and an impressive pedigree. On that note, we'll take a short break. When we come back, well, we'll catch up with two very famous personalities from the Turf Club. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Flying high, you and me in my Flying high, you and me. Kingfisher Airlines, now connecting the US to India through Dubai, Hong Kong, Bangkok, London, and Singapore. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. For those of you joining us, we are in Pune for the SA Punawala Multi Million. And well, the man behind the scenes, the person in charge, is Dr. Cyrus Punawala. Mahindra Malia got a chance to catch up with him. What began as an individual table business venture grew leaps and bounds over the years. And today, Salem Institute of India is a big global player. The man at the helm never let lose his grip on the impetus of the business venture. 
and today Serum Institute is a proud supplier to almost 50% of the world's requirement when it comes to child welfare. Dr. Cyrus, the man behind the whole venture is with us today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Dr. Cyrus, tell us how it all began. When I wanted to start my business career, I knew at that time the king of sports, which my family was passionately involved in, so was I, had no future in a socialist country like India. And although I've still persevered the sport to its ultimate end, I felt a business that would be dealing with health or the masses of this huge country and its infant population would be an ideal choice. That's how Serum Institute of India was conceived. Incidentally, on the day in which the Villupunawala Gold Cup has been uh, run uh, this week. I must say that the foundation stone was laid by my late wife, Vilu, immediately the following morning of the marriage, which she insisted on doing instead of going on a honeymoon. And she also considered herself to be my Lakshmi. That's how Serum Institute has perhaps gone to this meteoric rise of being the world's largest manufacturer in several pediatric vaccines. How involved was Viru in your business interests? She gave me a lot of support and uh, encouragement, especially when things were not looking up. And she was a very strong believer in uh, prayers, be it Parsi or Tirupati or Sai Baba, everything together. And uh, um, great source of encouragement and was never a defeatist. Sometimes I used to get demoralized by the attitude of non-cooperation from the government health uh, ministry, but uh, that never deterred her. What was the major step in taking Serum Institute to a higher level? Serum's meteoric rise only started when WHO gave us accreditation. And we got pre-qualified for vaccines such as measles, tetanus, diphtheria, whooping cough, BCG, and uh, later on hepatitis. This gave us an opening for now being able to supply to UN agencies as much as more than 140 countries worldwide. And as you know, more than one out of every two child that was born in 2010 was administered a vaccine from Serum Institute. This show must have been a massive expansion. How did you manage to launch on such a gigantic scale? Oh, World-class facilities were set up uh, during the period that uh, we started Serum Institute in the late 60s by plowing back all the profits, the company. And uh, that enabled us to have uh, facilities which are R&D were able to improve the technology to such a level that our price was half of what everybody else was supplying. I could have profiteered. I thought it is a humanitarian gesture. I'll give a very low price, high quality product. Don't waste money on advertisement and publicity. With the result that I didn't realize that the entire competition was wiped out. Was the stance not to pump money into advertising and publicity a policy decision? Yes, and I wanted the benefit of my philanthropy to go down to the patient instead of the middleman and therefore I was fighting the doctors and encouraging the governments and hospitals to take uh, the product as far as possible directly so that the benefit would go to the uh, you know, underprivileged children of the world. Does it involve a lot of your personal monitoring of your corporate affairs even to this day? I have a very good team but they look up to me for a almost uh, hands-on as a CEO uh, monitoring and uh, once I retire, which I will have to one day, then Adar will have to also take that mantle on his head. How are you grooming Adar? That was the first question Bill Gates asked me when I met him a few months again, that I hope <clears throat> after you the company will not go into wrong hands because we are depending on you for low-cost, high-quality vaccine. 
which could otherwise be exploited by Big Pharma. And he took assurance from others that not only won't sell off, but he'll continue my philanthropic policy and take the company to uh, legalize. How do you perceive the future for Serum Institute? Well, obviously it's a very bright future, but uh, we have to keep on top of R&D to see that all the newer vaccines that are being launched by Big Pharma in the US, we are also not very far behind, like the pneumococcal vaccine, rotavirus vaccine, the human papillova vaccine, and dengue or uh, whatever other vaccines, uh, encephalitis vaccine. So that uh, meningitis, which we've already launched, but we want to improve on that. Uh, if we don't do that, then there is uh, a dim future. If we keep up to it, and if other wants to even acquire biotech companies and stay focused on his core sector, then his serum will continue to be even a bigger global player than it is today. Has Adar come forth with any vital or innovative inputs of his own? Yes, tremendous. We are on the verge of acquiring a company that manufactures polio vaccine in Holland and he has spent the whole week there and I deliberately let him go in so me so that he, you know, uh, stands on his own feet in evaluating the company. Coming back to your wife, Dr. Punawala, what was the last year like without Vilu around? Well, I really missed her much more than I did. You know, it's a tremendous lesson for all those who uh, um, take their wives for granted. And uh, when she went, there was such a vacuum, I really didn't think that it would affect me. It did affect me and therefore the pomp and uh, gaiety that we've been doing at the Punawala Million and the SA Punawala has been markedly lacking. And that's what because there's been a, a very low key event in mark of honor of our departure. How do you recall Vilu's fond memories? Well, as I said, very gutsy. She was a tomboy, passionately involved in I met her when she was on a horseback in Mahabaleshwar. And uh, we're going to name a lot of horses after her memory, uh, like Mahabaleshwar memories, which I have done. Uh, and she was extremely fond of horse racing, more than almost anybody I know on, on course. And uh, uh, that is a known fact. You've also seen it yourself. And uh, she was not only uh, passionate because people claim to be passionate. You could see her ride at the age of 60 uh, on a horse in China, for example. And she rode all our stallions, which are extremely dangerous much to the shock of my brother, who would, uh, if known, not have allowed her to ride, take a risk to her health. Racing and your personal business would have consumed a lot of your time. Was racing your first priority or your passion? Well, you know, administering racing, which has been my forte for the last, uh, at least a couple of decades when I have been chairman, uh, took away a lot of my energy and uh, attention from Serum Institute. And now that I'm not on the helm, it's definitely helped the company tremendously. Uh, and in hindsight, I feel if I'd paid more attention to Serum than I did in the administration of horse racing and breeding, I think Serum would have been at least twice its size. Your success, Dr. Punawala, has been phenomenal. What advice would you offer to young aspiring entrepreneurs? It uh, has to be partly in you to have entrepreneurship, uh, vision, uh, guts, uh, and have the courage of your conviction to do what you believe is correct. And then correct yourself if you realize that you made a mistake. And not go on uh, just uh, in doing what you believe is correct, but not what the others believe is correct. All entrepreneurs, the secret of their success is they have to take risks. You have to have the ability or acquire the ability, which I've made others do now, that while the deal is being proposed to you or suggestion is being proposed to you and you know it from your own experience, your mind should be quick enough to assess the situation and then at least eight out of 10 take the right decision. As a final word, how do you look back on your life? Well, I'm totally fulfilled. I set out uh, to be a committee member 30 years ago and 
I that time never dreamt that I had all the you know, turf clubs, the bodies, they represent India as a sole representative of the International uh, Racing Authority as the first Indian. Uh, so that was fulfilled. In Serum Institute also started as a very small company. Today is the world uh, major player and uh, my engineering companies which I started are also number one in their field. I, I think I'm totally fulfilled. Well, in a superb success story, when we come back from this break, we'll catch up well with his son to find out how he's coping with the pressure of being the next generation. Flying high. Fisher Airlines, now connecting the US to India through Dubai, Hong Kong, Bangkok, London and Singapore. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post and moving right along next up is Get to Know Your Pro. It's Adar Punawala, the generation next in the Punawala family. One of the most dynamic young entrepreneurs in the racing world is Adar Poonawala. Along with owning a 50% share of the Poonawala stud farm, he's also the next generation for the Serum Institute of India. Well, I started quite early. As soon as I uh, finished my uh, education, I started working full-time with my father. And uh, that's been now about eight to nine years. The main breakthrough came about in the early 90s when WHO recognition came, the World Health Organization uh, approved our facilities for exports. Um, today we export to about 130 countries globally uh, through UNICEF and directly to other countries. And so I would say that was the that was the time when it really took off and we were able to export out of India. Adar Poonawala is an early learner for corporate successes. His strengths are that of a seasoned entrepreneur. Well, because of our low price, um, we were able to offer our vaccines at 50-60% uh, less than what was being offered at that time. And um, this is mainly business done with other governments of other countries. And so this was a major factor which they recognized and applauded us for. Adar Poonawala along with his father, Dr. Cyrus Poonawala, ensured a no-frills marketing strategy and have provided the children of the world a high-quality product at low costs. Adar Poonawala is in fact fortunate to have a role model in his father. Well, you know, we've, um, we share at least half the day, even today, um, in meetings and other uh, decisions that we have to take. and. Um, the one thing I suppose what I have learned is uh, his ability to uh, take decisions on proposals where you know there would be a waste of time. Every day we get 10-15 proposals and it's very important to be able to filter that and, 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 and choose the right one and say no to the others at, an, at a very early stage. Otherwise you find yourself deploying resources and wasting a lot of time exploring you know whether this will work, whether that will work. So that's an important skill to have. And I feel that I'm, uh, uh, you know, learning how to how to use that to my advantage. And what about the future? Looking forward, uh, I'm trying to develop and launch a few other vaccines. We launched uh, swine flu H1N1. Uh, it was the first uh, nasal vaccine, uh, so there was no injection, no pain, no reactions. Very easy to use. Um, we all, I've also tried to enter into private markets, which. Um, would add to our sales. We've set up offices in Russia, in Argentina, in Nigeria. And, um, you know, uh, now there's a lot of competition as well, so we're trying to deal with that and try, we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. Also, another challenge is uh, getting good human talent and scientists, the guys who would 
built Siram with my father, now close to retirement, so I'm trying to build up the next uh, generation. So it's, it's quite a challenge, but uh, I'm dealing with it. Well, and the firm does look to be in good hands, but meanwhile, let's get back to the racing for the horses are ready for the SA Poonawala Multimillion. They're off and racing for the SA Poonawala Multimillion Grade 2 to a lovely even start by all the seven. And as they settle down to race, Suriveer close on the fence is the leader from Sonio in second position. Over on the outside, there's Haunting Fantasy in the middle, Secret Service. A stuppy making rapid progress on the wide outside. A length and a half behind the bunch is Cardinal, second last. Last of all is Saratoga Spring. The racing past the 1200 meter marker now with Astapi goes ahead just about a neck in front of Suri Veer towards the inside race between them Sonio. On the outside there is Haunting Fantasy very close behind this uh, Secret Service then comes Cardinal joining Secret Service on the outside. A length for the back there is Saratoga Springer close last as they come towards the 1000 meter marker. Suri Veer still about a length and a quarter in front of Astapi in second position. Sonio is on the fence. Then comes Haunting Fantasy. Between these two is the Secret Service. Then comes Cardinal. A length for the back there. Saratoga spring towards the inside race as they come past the 800 meter marker. And as they begin to negotiate the home turn, Suri Veer is still a length and a quarter ahead of a Haunting Fantasy showing some urgency to be well in touch. Towards the inside race there is Sonio between them, Astapi struggling. A length for the back there is Cardinal also making headway as they negotiate the Benin straight and upper home. A little over 350 meters more to run. It's Suri Veer now being passed on the outside by Haunting Fantasy. Cardinal also getting closer on the outside. Then comes Secret Service with about 200 meters more to run there. Haunting Fantasy is now being challenged on the outside by Cardinal and these two have pulled away from the rest with about 150 meters more to run there. Haunting Fantasy is still about three quarters in front of Cardinal coming up fast on the outside. It's Cardinal who goes for a strong finish. Cardinal wins the SF Punavala multi-million in very good style there. Cardinal certainly seems to be in the classic mode and comes from a Punawala blue hen. For the sure case, this is yet another potential champion in their stable of classic contenders. Actually, I expected him to win uh, better than what he did, but he has beaten a very good filly, I think. Uh, she is a winner of two races and he had to give her five kilos, almost five kilos. So he's done quite well. Well, his family doesn't suggest it, but uh, I don't know. He looked like it, yeah, he looked like it. And he was blowing a lot when he came back. I think he might go a uh, longer distance in this. Well, he's a good horse. He loves to run freely. He's a big striding horse. Uh, I was drawn one, I just pulled him out of the race and then slowly, gradually improved my position from the outside. And he ran a good race. The pace was early part, a uh, little bit fast and then it slowed down. But there was no problem for my horse, he settles beautifully, so really not a problem with him. He is not wobbly, but uh, this is the only second run of his life and he really doesn't know much about it. So it was just like one, you know, educational race for him. Well, my horse has got a good turn of foot, so I knew that I will get her at any stage of the race. And he just managed to get her by three fourth length, but I was full of running, I, I would have easily won more than that. Well then Cardinal, is he a classic hopeful? Only time will tell. Till then, it's been a pleasure to have you on board. As always, thank you for joining me and may the horse be with you. Goodbye. Fisher winning post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.